Welcome to One on One, the Daily Item's weekly digital program featuring Susquehanna newsmakers interviewed by Daily Item reporters. Today's guest is Tom Webb of Spyglass Ridge Winery, interviewed by Francis Scarcella. Sunbury Motors Kia is getting aggressive in August with 22 under 20 grand. Motors Kia is getting aggressive on prices with 22 brand new Kias priced under $20,000. Choose from 2018 Kia Fortes, Souls, Rios, Optimus, even some 2019 models. Sunbury Motors Kia has 2018 Kia SUVs under 30 grand, plus 0% for up to 72 months available on many models. And get Kia's 10 year, 100,000 mile limited warranty. Have a trade? They're aggressive there too. Paying you top dollar for your trade. SMC is getting aggressive and Purging their 2018 inventory. Sunbury Motors Kia on the Strip in Hummel's Wharf. Taxes, tags, extra, zero percent financing. Well qualified customers through KMS. Restrictions apply. Warranty is a limited powertrain warrant. For details, the retailer will go to Kia.com. Welcome to One on One. I'm Francis Scarcella, and we're being joined today by the one and only Mr. Tom Webb, Spyglass Ridge Winery owner and concert promoter extraordinaire. Yes, gee, that, that was a very nice intro, yeah. thank you. Big week, <laughs> big, big week. week coming up, a couple big, days from now. Next next six weeks are insane, but are this be... week, uh, for the next six weeks, this is kicking it off as an amazing weekend with George Thorogood. George Thorogood, you, you beat me to it. George Thorogood and the Destroyers are coming to town. Uh, let, let's go backwards before we get caught up. You started the summer concert series in your backyard. Just tell us a little bit about how that all even got started. Yeah, um, the concert series, first we started out 13 years ago with our first Celtic Festival. Um, good friend of mine, uh, Hugh Wilson, loved his heritage and everything, wanted to bring a Celtic Festival here. So uh, they came out to my place and he goes, how about doing a Celtic Festival? And I said, what we're going to do, I said, I was already in the mode of planning a blues festival at that time. And I said, yeah, let's do a Celtic Fest. So we started out with a Celtic Fest, and we put a tent up, a PA system, and booked all these Celtic bands, invited 12 wineries, and um, we were up till 3 in the morning that night building a plywood stage. And the first show we had was 250 people in a tent. And it rained... Uh, just like the last couple of weeks, I think we got like seven or eight inches leading up to it, and uh, and then crystal clear day for the for the festival. It was a beautiful festival, and we started out there. And eight years ago, um, after we built the Celtic Fest and the Blues Fest up to, we were getting anywhere from fifteen hundred people for the Blues Festival and two thousand people for the Celtic Fest. And uh, my wife and I were on vacation, and uh, I was listening to Kansas on the plane and I put the one earbud in her ear and I said I'm gonna get Kansas to play in our backyard and my wife looked at me and she's like let it go and uh, I said no then I was listening to sticks and I put the earbud in and I said we're getting sticks and then I was listening to Rush and I said we're definitely getting Rush right and she's like let it go so uh, so I came back uh, that was nine years ago right, nine, ten years ago, and I came back and called called an old friend of mine from my recording studio days who worked for uh, creative artists, and I said, get me a price on Kansas, Styx, and Rush. And at that time, Kansas was 35000 Styx was fifty, and Rush was 150 And I went to my wife, I said, Rush is coming to our backyard. <laughs> and she's like, you're not going to lose this farm over Rush. I said, I'll sell Rush. And she's like, absolutely not. And so hindsight of her reining me in, I think, saved it because we were nowhere near prepared for a show like Rush. Now, today, we could do a show Totally like different that. story out there totally. from, from eight years ago. And I guess that's one of the questions is, is that people say, well, you, I mean, you've had heart here. Yeah. You've had heart here. You've had Joan Jett here. You had Huey Lewis in the news here. I mean, it's turned into a major venue for Pennsylvania. I mean, uh, we've talked off camera, and you've told me how people have called you now and say, hey, how do we get into the winery to come? I, I got phone calls yesterday, um, three of them actually, 
uh, from some really big bands. We can't say, but it's it's pretty cool because now we are actually considered a venue. You're absolutely considered a venue. We yeah. did a we did an interview thanks to you with George Thorogood. Uh, which will be coming out, and he said the same thing. He said it's a venue. Yeah. He said it's a place where we looked and said, "Yeah, we want to go there." So that has to make you feel good, is knowing that that you took and it's in Sunbury. I mean, you're right here in Sunbury. You're not going to Philadelphia. You're not going to Hershey. You're not going to New York City. Yeah. You're coming right here to see the bands. And I think a lot of the the draw here is what from a, what I've heard is that you're bringing back bands that people know and they love. Right. I mean. It is what it is at this point for you out there. And, and so tell us about that, how, how cool that is for you to have that. Yeah, and it started out as a wish list for me, kind of my bucket list of all my favorite bands, you know. And like you were saying, Heart, you know, Huey Lewis, 38 Special, uh, you know, Kansas. Then we had Kansas back with a 40-piece symphony. You know, we had a symphony behind Kansas. We've had sticks twice. Ario Speedwagon. That was one. I got to tell you, that was one of the probably one of the coolest things that I've seen. Is you had you had Ario Speedwagon here, and no, I'm sorry, it was Foreigner. You had Foreigner, oh, yeah, here, foreigner yeah. and behind them was the Shikalimi. Oh yeah, the choir. The choir. Yeah. I mean, how? I mean, that was just one of the one of the greatest things here, and you'll never see that in New York City or places like that. And that's it, what you bring to the area. Yeah, and that's what was really cool because I I said about the uh, the song. I want to know what love is, right? Where they have the whole choir, the whole choir in that chorus, and uh, so uh, of course my daughter was in in choir, and I contacted the the choir teacher, and I'm like, can you scrounge up some kids? And they came out and they did it, and it was awesome, an amazing I mean, the whole place, experience. Well, the whole place loved it. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. So you have a lot of big things. I know you can't talk about a lot of big bands coming in, but but a couple weeks from now you even have another enormous band coming in yeah we have zz top coming uh august what is that the 24th i missed my dates so we have george yeah george this saturday and then zz top and then we just had uh roger hodson yep um that was an amazing show uh for me two hours of super tramp you know he's the lead vocalist and the guy that wrote all the songs the 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 band was phenomenal. The whole production was amazing. And Loverboy you had. Loverboy, Lover Lover Boy, Boy, they eh. said, was the greatest, one of the greatest concerts you've had. They said eh. they were just unbelievable. Yeah, and the coolest thing about the bands, they all want to come back. Like we, you know, uh, Brett Michaels. Brett Michaels yep. I was on the phone last week. Um, they want to start setting up that Brett Fest. He wants to come back every September and do a Brett Fest. And then it'll be Brett. Like we had him with Lita Ford. And so he wants to come back with a different band every year. So, you know, we were talking about putting him with White Snake or a couple of the other bands, um, you know, the hair bands. And again, when I you, used to if, have hair and muscles. If you haven't seen them the, out at Spyglass, uh, the winery, it's literally in your backyard. So yeah. you have a day of an event concert and there's people just walking right through. I mean, it's just the most amazing homey family type thing ever. Yeah. And not only that, then you also have... So many of our residents here that come out and help and oh. do things throughout the day. I mean, you're just providing uh, and people coming through town, buying gas, spending money through oh. town. And, and that's all courtesy of coming out there. Yeah, the hotels, we fill every hotel. Um, and all the businesses that that kind of benefit, that's the coolest thing for me. Like, you know, Susquehanna Valley Limo and Blue Line Limo, they run shuttle services from the campgrounds, from the hotels, because now we have people that come up with their campers, stay at the campground, come to the concert. Stay at the hotel, you know, get the limo, come to the concert. You know, we've had Strong Pools was a big sponsor for one of the events. Uh, Blaze Alexanders, mm -hmm. they they sponsor. And before you before now, before we take a break, now that's all the fun part of it. Yeah. There's a lot of headaches that go with it, too. Uh, Tell us about all the headaches. I mean, I, you went from, like you said, I know, a little stage to spending hundreds of thousand dollars on a stage that, that is set to be put in a, in a major arena somewhere. Oh, so, yeah. yeah but we, there's a lot of headaches. you got to deal with the bands. you got to deal with a lot of different things. And, and it's the logistics. That, like, literally, when people ask me, what's it's, you know, they, they see me up front jumping and, you know, and singing the songs and dancing and having a great time. You know, and, and they see me on stage and they're like, uh, what a life. Well, uh, I get about a half hour of that life. Everything else is insanity. And I tell people, they go, what's it like to put on the concerts? And I go, it's like putting on a wedding, planning a wedding for 3,600 people. 
that's what it's like. So, you know, if, if you've ever planned a wedding, um, just ask your wife. And you have to have everything secure. You have to have everything. Yeah. you got to watch everything to, uh, the entire time. And you have people that's not like you know the, the 3,600 people coming. They right. come from all over the world. I know that. They yeah. fly in from across seas. So there's a lot of headaches that go with that. But I got to tell you, there's never been, as far as I know, and you'll be able to vouch for this, you've never had any problems out there. In no. Days, I mean, minor I, little I mean, things here and there, but you've come. never had any kind of problems. Everybody seems to be, and maybe that's just a, uh, how we are in, this, in the Valley as far as, as not having those kind of issues. But everything seems to be good. And I know personally from being out there, state troopers come and stand there and listen to the music and, and watch the event and, and we, in and out and in and out. Yeah, they have, they, you know, all of our security are off-duty police state troopers, uh, and all the guys from the prison and the uh, constable's office and everything, they do all the security. Office, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, they do all the security around the stage. And without all of them, we can't make this happen. That's what's so cool. And then every band that plays, like uh, last year with Pat Benatar and Rick Springfield, mm -hmm. we had people from New Zealand, from Australia. We had people from Germany fly in for that concert. Um, all of Ca California like all over the U.S., and that's the coolest thing. And they come here, and they're like, God, we love the area. It's beautiful. How about the cleanup after? Uh, the cleanup, we're getting better. Uh, <laughs> anybody that smokes, please. <laughs> it's a, you know, We have no smoking, but I get it. It's yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, you know, it, it's mostly picking up all the little paper and the bottles and the and the Takes little stuff. Takes a day the next day. Yeah, so we automate it now. I bought a, <laughs> my employees love me. Uh, we bought a sweeper that goes behind the tractor. And then now they just go up and down and sweep it. And, and, the, and the grass, mud. And, and uh, Yeah, like when, you know, when the weather doesn't cooperate. But we've been extremely lucky. That's only happened twice. And, uh, you know, and it's an outdoor amphitheater. You know, so, uh, you know, we, but people have fun. It's great, you know. You see everybody running around, and you say that at the concert when you're there. When you get on stage, the first thing you say is enjoy yourself, have a good time, and, yep. and that's. And I, I mean, I see at the end of the night people walking up to you, shaking your hand. They have no clue from all over the world. They have no clue, but just shaking your hand. And the last one for Roger Hudson, we had three guys fly in from Texas, three brothers, all Super Tramp fans. Saw them once in the '80s, and it was their bucket list. And when he announced. This tour, the tour was only two weeks long in the United States. Then he was back to Europe. This guy called me and he goes, listen, we're trying to pick a place to go. Your place looks really cool. Um, tell me about it. And I told him everything. I gave him the hotel information. I got him hooked up with the shuttle. And, and they had the greatest time. And I've had now four emails back from them thanking me, you know, and we will be back. And, and those are the cool things. Those are the stories. Like even... Uh, uh, Mike Reno from Loverboy. Uh, I found an old photo. Our basement flooded last week, and I found an old photo of me in the in the '80s with a red bandana. It was my Loverboy starter kit, and uh, <laughs> and and he came in. That was a really cool. He said back in the seven late '70s '80s when they were really hot, he never got to know any towns. They just came in on a bus, played, left, went to the next town. Now he flies in three days before, and. And he had a rental car. He drove to Harrisburg, Williamsport. He drove all over. And he's texting and asking me questions about the river, about the area. Um, and nobody knew it. No, no. Nobody. And then I set him up. He loves to golf. So he golfed two days in a row with the golf pro and a couple other people over at the country club. And they took him out. Treated had him. a blast. And, and Tammy and I took him out to dinner. And so him and I emailed back and forth. So I emailed that photo to him. Uh, I said, here I am in 1980 with my Lover Boy starter right. kit. And he emailed back, he goes, that is too funny. Yeah. And then he invited Tammy and I to come to Canada in November because they're doing a big show up there. And here Roger Hodson is doing a show up there with a symphony. And he comes back in the winter for two more weeks. And he invited us up. So we might go up to Canada for and That's see awesome. the two shows. That's awesome. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk winery. We're going to talk. Yeah, and the new brewery. And the new brewery. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Sunbury Motors Kia is getting aggressive in August with 22 under 20 grand. Sunbury Motors Kia. Sunbury Motors. 
$100 Kia is getting aggressive on prices with 22 brand new Kias priced under $20,000. Choose from 2018 Kia Fortes, Souls, Rios, Optimus, even some 2019 models. Sunbury Motors Kia has 2018 Kia SUVs under thirty grand, plus 0% for up to 72 months available on many models. And get Kia's 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty. Have a trade? They're aggressive there, too. Paying you top dollar for your trade. SMC is getting aggressive and purging their 2018 inventory. Sunbury Motors Kia on the Strip in Hummel's Wharf. Taxes, tags extra, 0% financing, well qualified customers through KMS. Restrictions apply. Warranty is a limited powertrain warranty. For details, see retailer or go to Kia.com. Welcome back. We're joined with the one and only Tom Webb. Now, you told us about the concert side of things. Tell us about the winery, the new brewery. I know the new brewery's been a long time in the making for you and, and aggravation over it and the whole nine yards. But what, where we stand, where we, what, tell us all about it. Uh, we're coming down to the, the final end run here, which is great. Um, the, you know, like anything else, building anything, this has been a three-year project, actually seven years, because uh, I wanted to do start a brewery on a smaller scale seven years ago. Um, but the way the laws were written, uh, I couldn't hold a winery license and a brewery license at the same time. So thanks to Linda and Kurt Mosser and, and especially Gordon or Senator Gordoner was amazing and backed it. They finally got the PLCB to change the laws where we could hold the multiple licenses. Um, so then that kind of kicked it in for us. And then getting through zoning and engineering and, and you know, and then we when we had half of the structure up and we moved the brew house in place and we went oh boy those 12 foot ceilings aren't going to be high enough so then we had to jack the whole back of the building redesign it and go to 14 feet so that added another three months to go back into you know the designing engineering then go back to you know light and high go for approval and and uh, so we're putting on the final coats of the paint this week um, the electrician is wrapping everything up. They start building the cement bar. Uh, the kitchen will start going in. So we're looking, we're hoping probably October, you know, going in, end of September, going into October to do kind of soft launch. And then we'll be up and running for the holidays. And then, and then for the concerts, obviously next year, it'll be all, yeah. it'll be all ready to go. Yeah. For the concerts. Yeah. The structure's huge. I mean, if you drive by there, it's, it, was it bigger than what you thought it was going to be or is it? Well, it kept growing like bigger. everything else, you know, I think the original, original design was, uh, 42 feet by 42 feet and it ended up being 82 by 82. Oh <laughs> Didn't you After. fly to Italy to find like pizza ovens and the whole uh, Well, the, the pizza oven I found, it's two brothers from Italy that came here and patented it. Um, and they, they came to the States to protect their patent because they felt Europe and, you know, that it would get knocked off quickly and came here and started a company in Baltimore. But the brew house itself, um, I went to Italy and found this company, Inox Technica. And um, there's a big show in Verona, Italy, and then they move it to Milan. It goes back and forth. I think this year it's in Milan. And... Uh, this, this guy, literally, this company is huge. And they make the brewing systems for Heineken, Peroni, Stella Artois, like all the big boys. And he saw the trend through Europe and the United States years ago of the microbreweries. Mm -hmm. So he started miniaturizing everything that they make for the big boys. And so you can, we bought a 15-barrel system. and But you can buy 15, 20, 30s and keep going up. But the coolest thing about our system, one, the quality of Italian stainless steel is far superior to all the Chinese stuff that's out there. And, and, and even the Germans are still stuck with the copper, that old world. But the biggest thing about theirs is the software that runs it. It's literally the same software that Heineken uses and Stella. So my guys can, the process, they can manage and watch the entire brewing process on an iPad. Wow. Or on the touch screen on the on the on the equipment. So the greatest thing about that is consistency for us. So if you like our IPA or if you like a lager, when you come back, it's always gonna taste it's like same. it's just like you buy Yingling, it tastes like Yingling. Same. Yeah. Right? It's always the same. And that was the one thing that kind of bugged me with a lot of the microbrewers was inconsistency. And I wanted to kind of work through that. And uh, and then so we have the first one in the States. 
and it worked out really well because I ended up getting the entire system for cost, his cost, which saved us so much money. Otherwise, I would I'd be like everybody else, you know, purchasing a, right. a you know a cheaper system to start with and build into. Um, so he's going to use us and my guys as a showroom. So if you want to build a brewery, um, you'll come brew with my guys on the equipment, and then if you buy a system, he's going to send my guys to brew with you and teach you on it instead of sending his crew from Italy. Oh wow! And so what do you what do you think all that? I mean, there, obviously there's been wineries popping up, there's been uh, microbreweries popping up all over the place. I know I know we talked about it. You said you good good for everybody to have at it. I want ten more to to pop up around me. Just like going to the Finger Lakes or going to Napa and all the wine regions, you become a destination. So um, we were a destination to begin with because, you know, like, a, like last year, we had over 15,000 people come to our concerts, right? So when you look at all that money spread out across the valley, right, all spent locally, even our food vendors, everybody's all local. And um, so... The idea and the, I think the trend, everything's becoming local again because back in the old days prior to Prohibition, look at Sunbury had a brewery, right? Had two at one time, I think. Schmokin had two or three. Each town had their brewery and everything was made local, everything was local. You know, and prior to Prohibition, I think Pennsylvania was the second largest distilling. We were the third largest wine producing state and I think the second largest beer producing state. And then Prohibition destroyed all that. The vineyards, it, you couldn't even get a winery license in Pennsylvania until 1963. And when I was licensed in 95, I was the 64th winery to have a license since the end of Prohibition. Now there's 300 and some, I think, in Pennsylvania, which is amazing right right and same with breweries they're popping up right. you know we have a couple in town and all over nori's going to be one so just like colorado people who fly to colorado to go to all those breweries so you love that but love that come all over the place because they don't just stop at one anyway everybody no. tours they tour and they taste everything all over the place yeah and even in the winery it amazes me that like every weekend we have people from philly from the lancaster area i don't know i don't, I don't know if they're they give people in Lancaster money to get out, <laughs> <laughs> or they they just give them a pass. Go see the rest yeah, of the state, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> York, Lancaster, it's amazing how many people we get from there, and Maryland and Virginia. Did you ever have any plans on expanding that and going to different areas with it, as far as like even like little little sub stores, I guess, this, for the wine. I always my business plan where you just see a lot of wineries that have. Uh, extension Outlet. stores, yeah. outlets, and everything. Um, I never wanted to do that. Uh, I think I was too lazy for that because uh, I always felt I didn't want to go, have to go to people. I want people to come to me. And that's where the Celtic festivals and the festivals and the concerts came. I want to bring people to me. And then that's the same thing with the brewery. Well, I got to tell you, even with that, I mean, even when we spoke to Thoroughbred, they don't even say Spyglass. They say Tom Webb. Yeah. So it's like yeah, when it's, you're going to go to Tom Webb's, you're going to go to Tom Webb's. Yeah. So, that's, so you branded yourself with, with all that. Right, which is really cool. I mean, it, it kind of grew out of nothing, you know, out of a muddy field. And I'm humble. Like, oh, I, like I, I, you know, I tell people all the time, still have my real job. Uh, you know, it's still a hobby. You work nine to five every day. I, every day. <laughs> and I put jeans on and a shirt like everybody else. And and for me, it's always about been about my area that I live in, bringing something here and making the area that I live in better. Every, every I will say, every time that I've done an interview with you, you've always said, make sure you say that this is about the community and this is about here. And you've always said that you've set up funds now and scholarships oh, yeah. and stuff that you're doing various different things to give back. Yep. Got a scholarship in my friend, you know, Tim yep. Kinsey, who had the runner's roost, you know, the bike shop and everything unexpectedly passed away a few years ago. So we're building that scholarship fund now and starting next fall, I mean, next spring, we're going to give a nice scholarship because he loved to cook besides having the bike shop. So we're going to pick a student that wants to follow a career in culinary. And we're going to issue, you know, give a scholarship every year in his name. That's great. And then, and then all the fundraisers that we donate concert tickets to and, you know, things to help people raise money. 
It's great. Well, well, I appreciate you coming in, and uh, we look forward to to George. We look forward to ZZ Top. We'll we'll be there with you, and uh, you'll be able to check him out anytime. Go out, see him out at Spyglass, or come to a concert. Any last words that you want to tell the people about anything? Nah, come uh, come out and have fun. See your favorite bands. That's the whole idea. Just come out and have a great night. I think Thoroughgood only has a couple hundred tickets left, so you can still go online or call or get them at the winery. Um, ZZ Top sold out in 31 hours, um, and I think we've been getting some. Like a lot of people buy extra tickets or buy tickets, mm-hmm. and then they can't make it. I think we have like 11 tickets. So the first 11 people go for it. But I think we have like 11 tickets in the winery for that if you want to see ZZ. And then we have uh, Get the Let Out if you've never seen them. That's September 8th. Uh, and then we're working on putting a pretty cool thing with all local musicians to end uh, the year. F- for October. Like that first weekend in October, we're going to do kind of a really cool, like a jam out with all local uh, people. That's, kinda, that's awesome. I got to ask the last thing, and I know you probably can't say, but they, they're, they're, they're forcing me to ask. How about any kind of ideas, top five bands that you're that you're that you want or thinking about? Boston, um, and we've had them. I've had the contracts in my hand five times, and then Live Nation buys it out. But Boston, we're working on Joe Walsh. Same with Joe Walsh. We had we've had him contracts in my hand three times, and then they put that Eagles reunion thing uh, together. Um, Brian Adams, Ario Speedwagon just contacted us. They want to come back. Sticks, they they call it. They'd play our place every year, and I would have them every year. I think um, there's. Uh, we're looking at Peter Gabriel. Uh, we're looking at uh, the Pretenders, and then uh, we're also kind of putting our feelers out there for some of the '90s. We're looking at the band Live, Smashing Pumpkins. We're going amazing now that we're improving mm-hmm. like that roof. We mm-hmm. bought that new roof. Is that your plan? Are you gonna go? Are you gonna eventually have? Oh yeah, absolutely. Are you eventually gonna have one of these people that you're listening to? That's coming. I yeah. Forget. So we want to kind of get into some of that '90s, uh, and then also we're looking at some of the bigger country. Uh, I, I think for our area, I think a like one country show would be really cool. Is you're gonna do a country show a year? One yeah, country I think, show? yeah, I think we're gonna, yeah. if not every year, but maybe, or yeah, I mean we'll see. But we're gonna throw it in, and country's really hard. Like country, it's it, country's the new rock, right? Like it was in the '70s and the '80s. So you're either hot or you're not. There's no in between band. So you know the hot ones are stupid money, and then the other ones are really cheap. Like, the country fans are very finicky. You know, they just go for the ones that are hot, and then the ones from two, three years ago are nothing. They're drawing, like, a 1,000 people. It's crazy. Right. It's a crazy market. Right. So, But we're, we're looking at some country. Well, there you have it. Check it out. Spyglass, Tom Webb, thanks for being with us. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching One on One. We hope you will join us next week as we will be joined by Brian McClintock, Senior Director of Communications, for Little League International.